We live in a universe where intelligent order wants to happen. Change is necessary in order to create order. Change is the basic operative principle of the universe. But we resist or avoid or try to control change. Don't try to control. Accept what is. Stay in the flow. In all life situations, we can choose to be the rock in the middle of the river or we can be the water. We have to decide to be the stone or the water. Water is more powerful than stone. We have the key to life, and that key is that life is a state of consciousness. The great creative word is, I am. It is the secret of life. This is a whole new world and a whole new way of seeing the world which means it is a whole new way of seeing God, of being human, of developing spiritually as well as physically and uh, socially. I mean it. I mean, this, this notion of consciousness is the riveting of a message in time. What are you conscious of right now? What are you generally conscious of? What do you have any idea what, what you are not conscious of in your life? It is the riveting of life in a moment of time. It's that nail that holds you. It's the nail that, it's the whatever got you. For somebody it'll be that vase. For a potter, they won't see anything else. Their consciousness is is already shaped by their interior. So I'm not sure you can reshape it, but you can use your consciousness to think beyond it or to, to interrogate it about its general meaning. Well, look, we're sitting in a, in a room that has <clears throat> some years of history in it in this community. It's made up largely of things that the community accrued through time. Other people call them antiques, we call them furniture. Where they have, they have no, no. Uh, the, the, they aren't historically real. They are real for us in the history of this community. Um, people can walk out, and some people will walk in here and see everything, go out and tick them off. Other people, like me, will walk in and see absolutely nothing. Were you in the front parlor? Yeah, that's where we were. What was it like? Uh, like a front parlor. That I just, it just, you watch people go through an art gallery. It's one of the most interesting spiritual experiences. It's much different than watching them in a church because they're really concentrating, you see. They're not just going through the ritual. They're really asking themselves, well, what is in this? What should I see here? What is this telling me? It's a great moment. It's why we need those things. Uh, I, I, I watch people go out to fish on the lake and you watch the intensity or the relaxation with which they just kind of ease into that moment. That's consciousness. It's a wonderful thing. And it's this terrible revolving door society in which we live. Really, it, it, if we don't have six possible things you could do in Erie on any given day, geez, Erie's a dull town. <laughs> it's got everything that any other town has. But if, if, it's not being, uh, if it's not being cooked and served by somebody else, then nothing's going on. What is that saying about our consciousness? You know, we're, we're living here, but is it being stretched? Are we stretching? Are we stretching anybody else? It's great to be conscious. It's very stimulating to be conscious. It's, uh, it, 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 it's very life-fulfilling to finally see the tree. The one tulip. That animal, that dog, that 
that's, that's a great moment because it, it, it suddenly enlightens your consciousness to understand for the very, you might be 60 years old before you see one tulip in a bank of tulips on, uh, in Amsterdam. But if you live to the point where you can see that single blade of grass, you have the opportunity, you have just opened your soul to every possible gift that life has to give. We have introduced ourselves to a, an approach to truth, which I call contemplative inquiry, where your consciousness, your I, is using a method here it's a rational method, but it's a method of exploring the I itself, the, the conscience itself, which is a, an approach to reality, a very important approach to reality. All the art creations are using this, consciously or unconsciously. When you write a piece of music, you're putting into expression something about being a being uh, who musics who rhythms, who vibrates, uh, who has melody, uh, whatever you might want to say about that. Now there's another approach to truth, equally important, and in fact we have made more important, which we might call scientific research. And this is consciousness using the method of scientific research to look at not I, not consciousness, but it, some kind of it, which is an approach to reality. Now by it I mean uh, tables and water bottles and other beings. It might be looking at the brain of some human being with the instruments that can measure what's going on in your brain. But science doesn't look at consciousness. It only looks at manifestations of consciousness like brain vibrations or behaviors of conscious beings, animals and humans. But the process of the approach to truth called scientific research is to look at the its. So if you're a brain researcher, uh, you're, you're, you're interested in what consciousness is going on in the person whose brain you're looking at, but if you want to know, you have to what? Ask that person who's the brain owner what they're feeling, and then you can see if that particular feeling or state of consciousness corresponds to the electrical instruments that you're using to observe brain waves and so forth. This contemplative inquiry is an approach to truth about reality, and this scientific research is an approach to truth about reality. And it's the same reality that's being approached, but contemplative inquiry can't see scientific research approach, and the scientific research can't see the contemplative inquiry approach, because it's only dealing with its. It's not looking at consciousness. It is part of the motif of science to not be subjective, but to be objective. And consciousness is not an object. Consciousness is only experienced directly by your conscious being looking at your consciousness. So the Scientist is not studying consciousness, ever. Only reports of consciousness, behaviors of conscious beings, but consciousness itself, in order to even understand what you mean by the word, has to use this other approach to truth. I didn't know that I didn't know my consciousness contained the secret of life, the truth of who I am. Yet I am beginning to grasp an interior journey delivering me into the practice of a contemporary contemplative. Come with me as we journey deeper into the mystery of awareness and the awareness of mystery. <laughs> 